Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Hello. It's Thursday, the 13th of October, and it's in the, it's noon. And I'm coming on because I uh, had a busy morning, and I went out and grabbed the new Magma. So I wanted to give my first impression, review. A couple other things came in. I'll just speak of, of um, <clears throat> quickly. Brand new Magma album, Cartel, just released. Uh, Three-sided with um, a etching. It's a nice etching of the Magma logo. Like on the cover, the uh, symbol, which the symbol which has the Magma emblem on it. Pretty, pretty classy. Y'all know that Magma's been around since the beginning of the 70s. French band created their own style, Zool, and language. So they're kind of like an institution in my house. And um, I've, I've always liked them, but I've gone through periods where I they were too much for me. And I had to come back to them. So my first impression of this new album is, thank goodness Magma is still around. This is very vocal oriented. And it's unrealistic to expect them to play the way they used to, even though they're still great players. But that manic, fiery energy that Christian Vander had in the early years, you know, we're all older. He's older. He still plays with a whole lot of vigor. But we're older. And, and that seems to be reflected in the um, focus of the music. It's still very much this Coltrane derived um, modality when it comes to the writing. And the singing is beautiful, actually. I prefer the female vocals and uh, or rather when Christian Vander himself does not sing. <laughs> okay. So um, I haven't got to the second disc, which is just the one side and apparently it's um, these early versions, vocal and piano only, apparently, versions of these songs. But I'm glad I got it. I've seen some grousing um, comments on, in the music groups about the new Magma, mainly from people who are always having these expectations. And it's like, as a person who makes music, I don't play to others' expectations. That's not a good way to go. Kind of like what I was talking about Ozzy. You know, Ozzy's albums, as well-crafted as they are, they are playing to expectations, which I think is unfortunate. Arthur, thank you so much for sending this to me. The remaster of Centipede's September Energy. Sadly, we lost Keith Tippett, the, the pianist who was the mastermind behind this in 2020. I do have this on vinyl, and I can tell, you can't really see that I'm, I just grabbed the, I, I, duh. Thank you, Arthur. You're so thoughtful and kind. Along the same lines, Nathaniel Mellers, you got in Hackney. Wow. Very cool. And I like this stuff, Nathaniel. This single, Horrific Object and Irrigating Hell. Listen to this already a couple times. There's, um, and it's way cool. Vinyl, look at that. The split, split colors, nice color choices. But this is moody, and I, I don't understand what these words are about. Um, I don't quite get it, but I like this music, and it's moody and um, kind of kind of strange. And even more exciting, you sent me a test pressing of your new single. Life becomes a promo, and this is nice. It's like a two hundred gram vinyl um, test pressing. I like both of these, Nathaniel. Um, the A side of your new single melodically started to remind me a bit of Mew. And that's a compliment 
coming from me. I love Jonas Beer's writing. The singing too kind of brought me in, and I still don't understand these words. What you're, what you're, what you're getting on about? But I, I love that. I love receiving this, and I like it. I do. Nathaniel Miller's horrific object backed by irrigating hell. Those just came in yesterday, and I like them. It's going to be a short one, folks. Um, oh, I do want to share this in case R R Richard, you see this. Richard Johnson. I really enjoyed this. I finally got all the way through it. This is Scion Organ's Dust Album from last year. That cover puts me off. It does. It's just, I just, that's a very unpleasant cover to me. But this is very interesting work. A lot of cool things going on with the sound. I'm intrigued by the sound work in particular. It goes through, um, musically, it goes through a different, several different things. And the people that are on here have worked with some of the other artists that they remind me of, like uh, Coil and the Revolting Cox. There seems to be a, um, some sense of sexuality throughout this that I don't quite, um, I don't quite get, but it's like it's there. I, it's like I feel it. But the, the, the track, the last track on the album is a standout. The Mouth That Has No Face. Again, I don't know what those words are about, but the music is great. And the way that they treat the chord change is grand. Kind of reminds me, and this is a compliment, reminds me of old Genesis. It's grand and it's beautiful. The mouth that has no face. Nothing else on this album sounds like that. But it's like, wow, I'm glad I finally listened all the way through it. That is really good. Scion Organ. Well, since I'm, it's sitting here, I did play this last night. Susie and the Banshees, Tinderbox. In particular, I like the, the track 92 Degrees. Cities and Dust was the big hit up of here. I think the song 92 Degrees is even more epic. It's epic. It's the way that it, the way that it builds. And Budgie's drumming, as simple as it is, is just magnificent. Okay, I'm going to just stop there. Um, I recommend the new Magma, I do. And um, I also will, will give a big thumbs up to Nathaniel Mellers and God and Hackney. Check that stuff out, guys, all right? Hello, everyone. I'll shout you out, Phil. You say some very astute things at different times, so I'm shouting you out today. Take care, everyone. <laughs>